Piers Morgan against woke culture. Piers Morgan, a controversial figure known for his outspoken nature, has positioned himself at the forefront of a cultural debate, challenging what many call woke culture. But what does it mean to be woke? And why is Morgan so fiercely against it? Today, we'll explore the core of his criticisms, from cancel culture to free speech, and the global reactions he's provoked. Is Piers Morgan right? Or has he taken things too far? Let's dive into the firestorm of controversy he has created. I find this ultra-woke mentality so illiberal. Piers Morgan's initial reactions to woke culture. Piers Morgan's disdain for woke culture didn't emerge overnight. It was a gradual build-up, visible through his social media presence and comments on air. One of the earliest examples was his criticism of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. When the couple spoke out against the royal family, accusing them of racism and aligning themselves with woke causes, Morgan's disbelief in Markle's claims about her mental health led to one of the biggest media storms of his career. Democracy, like the United States, like the United Kingdom, that people are too frightened to speak their mind, to say what they think. What do we do about this? About gender-related things, and it's some people get bored with it, but they, there are really important principles at stake here. Morgan discussing free speech, identity politics, and gender pronouns. Morgan's sarcasm and humour often accompany his critiques of what he calls the woke agenda, using his platform to mock identity politics and gender debates. His stance has angered many, but he remains unfazed, believing that the so-called woke movement is stifling honest debate. The Good Morning Britain exit and Meghan Markle controversy. In March 2021, this is a two-hour trash-a-thon of our royal family, of the monarchy, of everything the Queen... Has Things came to a head when Piers Morgan made one of the most controversial statements of his career. After Meghan Markle's Oprah interview, Morgan expressed disbelief in her claims regarding mental health struggles. The backlash was immediate and intense. Morgan's refusal to apologise led to his dramatic exit from Good Morning Britain. I'm being... Sorry, can't this do this. This is absolutely diabolical behaviour. The clash followed Piers... Don't believe almost anything that comes out of her mouth. Piers... Public response was divided. While some praised his honesty, others condemned him for being dismissive and lacking empathy. The controversy around this incident became a symbol of Morgan's battle against woke culture, a battle that many saw as a fight for free speech this morning and I, there was a story which absolutely will be in the wheelhouse for, for the show I'm going to be doing because I don't know about you guys I am sick of cancel culture Thank you. I'm sick of this woke insanity which is sweeping the world which is designed to basically have a small group of people shout and scream and tell us all how to lead our lives and I thought that the story this morning involving while others saw it as a failure to listen to marginalized voices sixth peers Morgan versus cancel culture Cancel culture, according to Piers Morgan, is one of the most dangerous aspects of woke culture. To Morgan, it represents an organised effort to silence individuals for past mistakes or controversial opinions, an attack on free speech. He's called it a modern-day witch hunt, where people are punished instead of being given a chance for redemption. 2019, over some controversial tweets he did way before that. Hart says, quote, when, we, when did we get to a point where people are supposed to operate perfectly all the time? People get locked up so they can be taught a lesson. When they get out, they're supposed to be better. But if they come out and people go, oh, I'm not giving you a job because you were in jail, they're saying that all life should be uh, over because of mistake. This is in a brand new op-ed. Our next guest agrees, defining cancel culture as fast food closure. Theologian James... But critics argue that cancel culture is about accountability, not censorship. They say that individuals like Morgan aren't being silenced. They're just facing the consequences of their words. To this, Morgan has one response. If we can't openly debate, what's the point of free speech? Free speech, the core of peers. Morgan's argument. For peers Morgan, free speech is not just a right. It's the foundation of a free society. He believes that woke culture, in its attempt to protect feelings, has crossed the line into suppressing opinions that don't align with its ideals. 
that in a democracy like the United States, like the United Kingdom, that people are too frightened to speak their mind, to say what they think. What do we do about this? I think you say what you want to say and to hell with the consequences. Mm. You got to be willing to fight for your rights and fight for what you believe in. And if you're a person who believes in freedom of speech, you have to fight and say what you feel and let the chips fall where they may and uh, stand on that. And, you know, it may not be an easy road, but... Um... But where is the line between free speech and hate speech? Morgan has been criticized for being inflammatory, with some claiming his comments border on offensive. Yet, he maintains that tough conversations are necessary, even if they make people uncomfortable. Eat. The criticism and support peers. Morgan receives. Like any public figure, Piers Morgan has his fair share of supporters and detractors. His fans argue that he's a much-needed voice of reason in a world gone mad with political correctness, praising him for challenging what they see as absurdities within woke culture. On the flip side, his critics call him out for arrogance, saying he's out of touch with modern progressive values. Clips of debates featuring Morgan and his critics. Morgan's confrontations with public figures often result in fiery debates, but regardless of where you stand, it's undeniable that he's sparked a conversation that continues to shape public discourse on these cultural issues. The broader impact. Has Piers Morgan shaped the debate? Whether you agree with Piers Morgan or not, his influence is undeniable. He's made headlines across the globe, using his platform to shape the conversation around woke culture. But has he really changed minds? Some data suggests a shift in public opinion, while others argue that he's simply preaching to the choir. Interviews with media experts and opposing viewpoints. What's certain is that Morgan's name has become synonymous with the fight against wokeness, and whether that fight is helping or hindering societal progress is still up for debate. Are you going to let me talk or are you just going to overtalk me? Just answer the question. Think because of your actions and some of the things you've said. I mean, I think there's probably no doubt she's had racism on social media because it's... Who hasn't, it's a, it's a cesspit. You probably have. Well, as I said just now, I've had death threats on social media and no, no, one, no one seemed to care very much. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's probably inarguable. My issue with what they've both been doing is if you're going to make allegations against an institution like the royal family... And the ...boss and to the government regulatory body under attack to basically conform to her version... Conclusion. Where does the debate go from here? As woke culture continues to evolve, so too will the conversation around it. Piers Morgan shows no signs of backing down, especially with his new show, Piers Morgan Uncensored. But Capitalism is a colourful riot of banks, brands and businesses competing for our cash. We give them money, they give us the things we need or desire to make our lives easier and less miserable. That's the deal. But there's a problem. They hate you. I mean, they don't seem to care if you know it. At some unidentified point in recent history, companies lost interest in simply selling things and decided it was their duty to change the way that you and I think. Someone somewhere said corporate board members of the world unite. And suddenly the people who sell you things are disproportionate it's response genocide. to what happened. Well, it was genocide. They would want to kill everyone in Palestine. They don't. They just want to drive them all out. Whereas Hamas do want to kill every Jew. That is actually what genocide is. You know what's actually interesting? Because you've spoken about this subject with people more who actually understand the conflict better than I do. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Hijab understands it better. Loki understands it better. I'm talking from a very general humanistic perspective because I don't understand the absolute intricacies like they do. Do you know what genocide means? Of course I do. Right. It's genocide means you want to eradicate an entire people based on race or ethnicity. Israel clearly doesn't want to do that to the Palestinian oh, clearly, people. clearly not. If he did, he wouldn't tell a million of them, as it turned out, who moved south. Now, there are arguments about whether... To attack them as they moved. Well, some people got hit as they moved. Oh, some people got hit. Yes. Some people got hit. You know what, You know Andrew? what happens? You know what, Andrew? Wait till it's your son, son. You know what, I... Wait till it's your I son. I agree. And you know what, Andrew? War is horrific. It's horrific. The question is, is it a just war for Israel to go after Hamas? And if it is, and you believe as I do, that Hamas has to be got rid of, how do you do that? It's if very... you don't do it the way Israel... The question remains. Is he truly fighting for free speech? Or is he standing in the way of necessary social change? Only time will tell. So, what do you think? Is Piers Morgan on the right side of history? Or has he gone too far?
Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts on the future of woke culture and free speech.